this, this day, this exact day, this day right here, this is the day that the Lord has made. It did not come about by accident. It is not random chance. It is a gift. It has been crafted by our great and loving Creator. And therefore, because of that, I will rejoice and be glad on the occasion of this day, because it's God's day. It's the only opportunity that I will have to be with God right now. We're learning about habits. One of the things I want to say about habits is because something becomes a habit, it does not mean that that has to uh, be done in a way that's automatic or by rote. In fact, that's what I want to talk about today precisely is the habit of attending to something in our minds. Ezra Sullivan, in his book, Habits and Holiness, cites one study that says that 50% of the time people's minds are wandering. That is, they are not attending to the task or the event that is at hand. Half of you missed that, so I'll say it again. 50% of the time, people's minds are wandering. And therefore, we miss what is going on in life. And that's actually... Uh, a, a practice, a habit that can be cultivated to attend to something. We'll talk about paying attention. Attending is actually related to that word for tender. It means to uh, tender, tendon. It means to stretch my mind out towards something, just like I can stretch my body towards something. I'm able to stretch my mind and my soul and to wrap around it. And so often I go through life on autopilot and miss this is the day. Now this relates to what might be thought of as a, a kind of pervasive habit to cultivate. Uh, Sullivan talks about it as the habitual readiness to flourish. And it is a, a bit to the will like an open mind is to the intellect. I want to have an open mind so that I'm always open to truth. And whenever I'm wrong about something, I'm quick to recognize it and change what it is that I believe. That's a great quality to have. That's great virtue. I want to cultivate an open mind. At the same time, I want to have a surrendered will, a habitual readiness to flourish. That is, when I see a habit that is wrong in me, I want to be able to surrender it, to let it go, to find out how to replace it and then how to cultivate the right kind of habits. William James in his classic book, uh, Principles of Psychology, begins his chapter on habit with this classic comment, so an action reap a habit, so a habit reap a character, so a character reap a destiny. And that is not a cliche, it's not a sever clever sounding or trite expression, it is simply neurologically physiologically true. That's part of what we're learning. When I do something one single time, I therefore become a little more likely to do it the next time. God has created us in that way so that over time, most of my actions become habits. And then each habit contributes to my character and my character is my destiny because the main thing God gets out of your life and mine too is the person that we become. And now the great invitation that I want to return to today is that invitation from Frank Laubach uh, that we talked about uh, not long ago, the game with minutes. And the game is I see, can I cultivate this mental habit? Can I bring my mind back to God and God's presence once every minute? I'll have other things to do, other tasks, but can I right now remember God is with me? I feel a slight breeze, and I remember that the word for wind or breeze is the same as the word for spirit. And I think that just as that breeze is on my face, um, so the Spirit of God is in me. Just as breath fills up my lungs, so the Spirit of God is with me. In fact, when Jesus, in the uh, end of the Gospel of John, sends his Holy Spirit on this, his disciples, he it actually says he breathes on them. We've talked about that and he's a teacher. And so he teaches them in an unforgettable way. Every time I breathe, that can be the game with minutes. I cultivate a habitual readiness to flourish. Now, here's what I wanted to tell you today. Frank Lubbock has uh, a description of 
what the prize is for playing this game. And I love this so much, and there was a freshness to it that I thought was very helpful to me and might be helpful for you as well. Uh, and the language for this is, is uh, quite vivid. It's his language, so I'm not gonna modify it or soften it because it challenges me to what might be possible in the realm of spiritual adventure together with God. Lobbock writes about the game with minutes. It is obvious this is unlike other games in many respects. One difference is we all win. And you know, God wants you to be a winner and to feel like a winner in this great game. We may not win all or even half our minutes, but we do win a richer life, which is really all that matters. There are no losers excepting those who quit. Let's consider some of the prizes. We develop what Thomas A. Kempis calls a familiar friendship with Jesus. Kempis wrote uh, uh, a, a kind of classic book about the imitation of Christ. Our unseen friend becomes dearer, closer, and more wonderful each day until at last we know him as Jesus, lover of my soul, not only in songs, but in experience. Doubts fade. We are made more sure of him being with us than of anybody else. This warm, ardent friendship ripens rapidly until people see its glory shining in our eyes. You ever see somebody where their eyes are just fully alive, they sparkle, they twinkle with God? Another prize, all we undertake is done better and more smoothly. We have daily evidence that God helps our work, piling one proof upon another until we are sure of God, not from books or preachers, but from our experience. I was struck by this. If you've read much of Dallas Willard, you may know that he'll often talk about how to know God is not just to know about God, but to be in an interactive relationship with him. John 17, three, this is eternal life, to know you, the eternal father. And that's exactly what Labak is talking about here, where I don't just know about God, but it is possible to experience him, to interact with him. And, and so to develop proof, evidence that he's right here with me, he is right here with you. When we are playing this game, our minds are pure as a mountain stream. The Bible seems like a different book. It begins to sparkle with the beautiful thoughts of saints who have had glorious experiences with God, and people have. All day long, we can become contented because whatever our lot is, we can go together with Him. It becomes easier to talk with other people about God because out of the fullness, the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And then, Lubbock says this, and this is what was especially fresh to me. The notion that religion is dull, stupid, and sleepy is abhorrent to God, for he has created infinite variety and he loves to surprise us. And if you look at nature or you look at the Bible, you know that that's true. God loves variety and he loves to surprise. If you are weary of some sleepy form of devotion, probably God is as weary of it as you are. Shake out of it. There's an old movie, Moonstruck, and Cher's talking to Nicolas Cage. He's just kind of this automaton doing stuff that he shouldn't do. She just smacks him, snap out of it. And I, I imagine God inviting, that, uh, inviting us to that. Approach him in one of the countless fresh directions. When our minds lose the edge of their zest, let us shift to another form of fellowship. I'm talking to a friend of mine today who is saying, you know, I love to go for a walk. I think I'll go for a walk and invite, talk to God on that walk. I have another friend who likes to read People magazine and enjoys the thought that God, I mean, God loves people. God likes people more than anybody. God created them. So God is happy when I read it. I can read it and actually read it to God and be with God while I'm doing it. This game is not a grim duty. Nobody needs play it unless he seeks richer life. It is a delightful privilege. If you get to play, if you forget to play it for minutes or hours or days, do not groan or repent, but begin anew with a smile, like right now. Because again, the joy of the Lord is our strength. God has created us so that we form habits when our behavior leads us to something that is satisfying or away from something that is unsatisfying. We can't help that. That's, that's what our minds do because they were made that way by God. Do not turn the game into a sour-faced penance. With God, every minute can be a fresh beginning. Ahead of you lies limitless anticipations. 
Walt Whitman looked up into the starry skies and fairly shouted, Away, O soul! Hoist instantly the sail, O daring joy! But safe are they not all the seas of God? O farther, farther, farther sail! This is the day. Are they not all the seas of God? Not dull, not grim. Every moment, look at him. Love is habit for me. Hi, I'm Tim. Thanks for joining us. You mean so much to us as a community, and we hope that this series helps you build some new habits in your life to help you grow spiritually one day at a time. And we want to hear from you throughout this series. If you have questions, you can put them in the comment box wherever you're watching, or you can email us or text us. And at the end of the series, we're going to sit down with John and talk about some of your questions. For more resources, you can visit becomenew.me. And to spread the word, you can hit subscribe, share this video with a friend, or give us a review on podcasts wherever you're listening. We'll see you next time.